I received a comment on one of my recent Linux Mint videos asking about the menu. Basically, somebody asked, had said, you know, I wanted to change things around here and I didn't like these and didn't see a way to do that. And I know we've covered that in the past, but I would, did want to talk a little bit more about just menus in general, being as that we are going to see a major change in the menu. And to my understanding, I think this version of the menu will still be available. And I'm going to show you why I think that might still be the case, because if you don't like this, menu here there are other alternatives that you can use instead of using this particular menu but I did want to talk first about uh, the person that said uh, they wanted to move things around in these categories and uh, that is actually quite easy to do here on Linux Mint right click now they actually added the add menu up here at some point in time you used to have to go into configure so this is what I told them to do go to menu and then hit open menu editor you can actually get to that now just hitting the edit menu. That is actually something that is new. Um, and then when you make changes in here, you might actually have to uh, reboot the system or at least refresh Cinnamon. But this is actually what dictates what is displayed on the menu. So, uh, for example, um, now a few things here are actually in the menu settings. Uh, so, like places, recent files. If you don't like those, those are actually in the menu configuration settings. Let's go ahead and show you those before we do this. So we'll go back into that configure and then under your menu. So if you don't want recents, just toggle this button off here and your recents disappears. If you don't want places, you can take that off and places disappears. Of course, that's one of the things that most distributions have on their menu is a way to get to your places from the menu. That's one of the main things that's happening. You can also, though, adjust your category sizes. You can show category icons or not. So there, if you want to do just a list without them. And then you can adjust the uh, sizes of the icons as well. So you can make those a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. So you can configure a lot of things inside of here if you want to do some of those changes. So that's one place. But as far as changing where items actually are, this is really the spot that you want to go with. So you'll notice that there's no game items in there. And that's why we don't have a games menu. As soon as something appears in there, this menu will show up. So the only way to disable things is uh, if you remove everything from the menu, which we can actually do by just deselecting those. And uh, you'll see that that gets rid of all of the graphic stuff. Basically, it says none of these will appear on the menu. And so now you can select what is actually showing up on the menu or not. But the other thing you can do is you can, uh, let's say, if you think document scanner should be under office, for example, instead of under graphics, you can either cut it or copy it and under office and paste. And now you'll see that your document scanner will appear under your office. So now there's your document scanner. Now it still appears up here under graphics. So you can either cut it out of there or you can um, uh, close it out. You'll notice I think I actually copy and pasted it accidentally one th time there. So let's go ahead and delete one of those. So that's how now we can move our, our document scanner from graphics down to office if you happen to want it down there of course i gotta see why is it not down there in office again okay it looks like to, when you when you copy it and paste it it will still appear here but it will also appear here but you'll notice that um let's go back here let's deselect it from there so now it's not appearing under graphics but it is now appearing under your office. It's been a while since I've done the menu editing. I thought I could do this uh, cold, but apparently not. Uh, but that's how you make the adjustment. Just be aware it is going to duplicate it in the original, but it will also appear over here. So don't delete it from the original. Just make sure that it is unchecked to make sure it doesn't appear on the menu. Of course, you can also use this. Here's uh, web and here's matrix. So, um, of course, web is the, these are like the, um, kind of like the progressive web apps of Windows, right? Uh, basically just the containers for the applications, which is what Matrix is. So let's cut it out of web and paste it down there. Let's see what that does. So you'll see it's still there under internet and now it is also under our web. And so web shows up there and it still shows up here. So we'll go under our internet and we'll uncheck it from there. And so this way you can customize your menu any way you want. So having changed all those, we can also change the icons for the main applications as well. 
uh, having those highlighted. And uh, we can change the name. Let's say we want to change it to Firefox logo for some reason. Oh, let's go with the blue logo. Oh, no, let's go with this one here. There you go. Customize Firefox logo. Click OK. Now, that may not change it. Okay, that did change it here immediately. So some of these minor tweaks you do, you might need to reset Cinnamon, which you can do by logging out, logging back in. But if you hold Alt, Control, and Escape, it will also reset Cinnamon. So you see that the menu disappears and it comes back. That's a way to reset Cinnamon. So if you did want to change those icons as well. So that is useful information for just changing your menu around. So uh, for the person that commented, wanted to know how to make those changes inside your menu, that's how you do that. Now, the other thing I want to show you is you can actually add different menus. If you don't like that menu or you want to add another menu, uh, under applets, uh, the applets are where you have... Uh, different. Uh, these are all the things on your menu here on your panel here are all applets and there's a bunch of these now some of these you have to go over and hit the download and when I come over here and I just kind of type in menu and then you'll see I've actually already downloaded a few of these I downloaded the cinema menu this is a flexible menu with a grid or list layout uh, there's a uh, Sin V7 Stark menu this is a Windows 7 type start menu uh, there's a few other ones over here as well that I played with uh, that weren't particularly amazing. But when you download those, um, if you hit the Add button, now it will add the menus over here. And if I go into my Panel Edit mode and I drag these menus around. So now what I can do is I can add different menus. So this is a cinnamon menu that is available that... You might like it just has your categories over here and your applications over here I have a search function over here and then I have favorites and such down here so that's one of the alternative menus if you want that instead of the original just hit remove your menu confirm that and now you have this one now I can configure this the same way I can configure the other one uh, so here is uh, this one I'm not as uh, quite as um, uh, familiar with so I can't tell you all of the odds and ends <laughs> about everything in here here's your custom icons if you want to there you go we'll just let's just use the Linux Mint logo icon for that um, we can change the custom icon size or not uh, and then here's your tips there's just some ideas here's your search functions so you can even have this thing searching the internet. So turn, switch this to none, or if you want that thing to automatically search the internet, you can grab your favorite. We have every, I mean, we have Brave, Start Page, uh, Baidu, Yandex, Ask, Ecosia, Brave. I mean, there's so many good options you have in there. And you can search emojis, you can do web suggestions, and there's a lot of options inside of that search. So you can actually really make this menu your own menu any way that you want. Uh, there's this menu here, so we'll add that one to the menu. And let's go ahead and do our panel edit mode. We'll just keep the old menu there. Let's uh, come out of our panel edit mode. And this one here gives you a menu that looks like this. So here's your all programs like this. You can go back to your favorites are all over here. You have all of your options here. Here's your search function over there. And let's see what type of configuring options we have for this particular menu. Again, here's a web search. You can set it to do different web searches. It looks like you can even add your own custom web search. So if you're self-hosting one, you can do that. Here's your quick launcher. So you can add or remove different items on each one of these applications. Let me have a quick look at what we have here. Okay, so there's our system info. There's your terminal. There's your printers. So if you don't use printers, you know, you can just take that guy off. And that will disappear from your menu. Here's your logout, all of your options there. Your sidebar, this is uh, what you have. So show menu sidebar. So you see that that got rid of the sidebar. And over here, you can do picture only, you do picture and username. So there's a lot of options that you have for your menu there. That's what your panel looks like custom icon and label so I can give it a custom label custom icon and then I can use your uh, 
specific animations there, whatever else I want to do. So there is that. Um, oh, there's also a Matei menu layout. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there you go. That moves it around. I like this one a lot better than, than the other one. Uh, so you have that option there. And I think there were a couple other ones I saw as well. Let me see what we got. This one here, I believe, is your default menu. So that's if you want to go back to your default, you can do that. And let's see, what else is down here? Let me search for menu, see what else I was missing. Uh, these ones here, I don't think, this one actually I think might have given me something. Let me have a look. Yeah, this one here is like a custom menu. Uh, so you can go in here and you can um, just make a little menu of just the things you want in there. The only real downside of this one is you do have to code it to get all of your application set up. So that's probably a little bit more advanced for your basic users. This one, I think, just controls XAMPP panel stuff, so that's not important. And did I look at this one yet? Yeah, this one here just does remote desktops, utilities, and things like that. So you do have other menus in there. There might be other ones available. And uh, I believe I've heard that the original menu will remain in here with the new one. I'm not totally sure about that, uh, but it did fit in on our discussion on menus. So hopefully that helped you out to uh, figure out. There you go. Now I've got two menus. <laughs> right. uh, but hopefully that helped you understand a little bit more about menus, how you can configure what options are on your menus and things like that. And let me see if... Yeah, so this actually, the menu edits that we did under our uh, main menu also carry over to all of these all other menus as well. And so that will give you the ability of how to change your menu and how to edit your layout on your menu on Linux Mint. Let me know other uh, questions that you have in the comments. I, I do actually read those most of the time. And uh, when I see interesting stuff, it makes for good videos. So this uh, this is to the person. I didn't uh, catch your username there before doing the video. But uh, the person that asked about how you can change uh, where things are in the menu, this one is for you. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.